Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Play Table Talk Back. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this episode, we're gonna take a look at your responses to my question, do you have any tips for people attending a board game convention? Well, we got a bunch, so let's dive right in. David Miller said, for Gen Con, I assumed I could book events and then pay for them later, but I was wrong and I lost my reservations. It turned out it was a blessing in disguise. I'm so glad I didn't have that many events to attend or I would have been burned out and not have had time for anything else. The events I did do far exceeded my expectations though and turned into great memories. This is a very good tip. If you know there's a specific event you want to attend, you could chance it and hope there'll be space for you there when you arrive, but it's better to book in advance and yes, you will have to pay up front, at least for conventions like Gen Con. Now that said, if you're not sure what you want to do, you can just show up. There's so many things you can do that don't require an event. Like you could spend your entire time there in the dealer hall just demoing games. You just go up to a table where there's a space, you sit down. The people that are happy to have you, they want to show you their games. So there's a lot of gaming and things to do without those tickets. But there are a lot of excellently run events as well. So it's something to look into. Speaking of which, this year I'm hoping to team up with some other people and we're gonna run an event as well that we'd like to invite you to. I'll have more information about that as the time gets closer, but keep an eye out. The Real Quaid says, if you do plan on buying games, wait until later in the day. The exception, of course, is if the quantity of the game you want is getting low. But I bought a couple of games early on in the day and had to carry them around with me everywhere I went. My arms felt like they were gonna fall off. Not only is that a great tip for the person carrying the games, but it's really nice for the rest of us if we don't have to walk around you with your two big bags of games swinging from side to side. David Flagell says, if you wait until Sunday, he's talking about Gen Con here, to buy things, many vendors will offer discounts on their merchandise. Note that the most popular games will likely be sold out by then. This is an excellent point. The publishers are going to have to ship back all of this product, so to save them money, it makes sense for them to discount some of the products they've brought with them. But not all publishers are going to do this, so don't walk up having an expectation that you're gonna get a deal, but keep your eyes out and maybe you'll find one. You may remember I mentioned that in some cases Gen Con will offer to mail you out your badge or event tickets. Well, Bo Roadbush wrote, My wife and I will go to the will call booth for our tickets and to pick up our badges so that nothing gets lost in the mail, which has happened in the past to others. Also, plan a meeting place if you get split up throughout the day and have a cell phone or a walkie-talkie so you can get a hold of your friends. That's a great tip. Last year, I spent a fair bit of time walking and waiting for my friends. We all did because you know, you plan to meet up somewhere, you're there first, so you're waiting, and there's things to see, so you wander off a little bit to go see those things, and then your friend comes that they can't find you, then they're wandering, and <laughs> pretty soon you're all split up again. Having a meeting spot is a great idea. Telen Striata says, if you have a car near the convention site, pre-pack your lunch or dinner and keep it in a cooler in the car. Saves money, and you don't have to wait to eat. Also, bring cash. Last year at Comic-Con, the cell service in the area didn't work. Any vendor that relied on their cell phones for credit transactions had problems. So those are both great tips. I love the one about pre-packing your food. You're right, you save all that time waiting and money. Listen, I know my gaming appetite is bigger than my actual food appetite, so I'd love to have that money that I save to spend on games. Anthony Riccano writes, Cough drops are your best friend. It will help keep your voice going for the whole weekend. Now, Anthony, I know, helps run different events and demos at conventions. So you can imagine it's especially important to save your voice for that, but no matter what you're doing, <laughs> unless you're playing the game in silence, you're gonna wanna save that voice. And Knight says, try not to be rude. There will be lines, there'll be lots of people, and many of them in your personal space. And things may not always go your way, especially when there's so many other people trying to do and get to the same things that you are. But try not to get mad and upset at the workers if they run out of something. Most of them are volunteers and have no control over it. Chalk it up as a loss and go find something else fun to do. This is a solid tip and to be honest, at a convention the size of Gen Con, you're probably going to run into at least one legitimate jerk. <laughs> but the best thing you can do is to not get caught up in their bad behavior. Go find something else fun to do and immerse yourself in that. Jared Collins writes, if you want to ship items home, there's a UPS store about a half a mile north of the convention center. Yeah, great idea. If you don't have room in your luggage, you can just ship things right back home. Nick Houston writes, what does the rest of your shirt say, Rodney? <laughs> oh yes, right. I was wearing a shirt last time, not this one, but it was for the same convention. This is for the Yukon Gaming Convention. It takes place in Michigan uh, in November. So it's one you might want to check out. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. 
Nick also suggests that you experiment. Try events that sound interesting that are user created. This is an opportunity to do something you may not get a chance to do again. If you have time or want to save money, consider volunteering. All cons, big or small, need volunteers. So if you have a day or two open, consider offering to help. Game companies often need volunteers at their booths as well, so check their websites. And depending on the publisher and even the convention, and how much time you're able to offer and how much they need it, they may be willing to cover some of your expenses, possibly your admission, maybe even some of your travel and accommodations. Steve Main writes, I heard this formula for conventions many years ago. Six, two, one. Each day, get at least six hours of sleep, two meals, and one shower. I cannot emphasize the last one enough. For the sake of everyone else at the con, please shower regularly. Well, I can't argue with his math there. Barry Dublay says, the only advice I can give is if you go to a big convention, be prepared to walk lots. So don't weigh yourself down and wear comfy shoes. Such simple advice, but such good advice. Yes, wear comfortable shoes. David Fears wrote in to talk about sometimes the trouble people have finding accommodations near a convention. He offers that people can look for local attendees who might share their house or apartment. He says, I live local to Gen Con, so if someone needs a comfy couch to rest their weary head or to play more games, I'd be more than happy to give someone a place to sleep. Aren't gamers the nicest just to open up their homes like that? Of course, I suppose serial killers would probably do the same thing, so check your sources. <laughs> but David, I'm sure you're a nice guy. Ardenidian asks, how much money does the average attendee usually spend at Gen Con? And how many new games do they buy? Well, that's a difficult one to answer. I think if you're a local attendee, you could probably get away with a few hundred dollars of expenses. But if you're coming from away like I am and you have to buy a flight and have accommodation expenses, well, you could be looking at $1,000 or more. As for how many games to buy, well, again, this is also going to depend on your budget and your impulsiveness. Remember, many of the things you're gonna find at a convention like Gen Con, you can also find outside of that convention, if not right away, then in a few weeks or a month. Now, some things will be promotional and you may wanna snap those up or they may be hard to find. And listen, it's a convention. Have fun, do what you wanna do. I'm not your dad. Brandon Kempf writes, Gen Con was definitely a great experience, but one that we aren't going to take in again for a long time. We prefer the smaller local conventions that are popping up all over the place, where the focus is more on gaming than it is on the business aspects of the hobby. I understand what Brandon is saying here. Gen Con is a busy, crazy place. There's a lot of promotional things going on. It does create a certain kind of pace. I wouldn't call it a laid back convention, but I would say it is sort of, it's sort of what you make it. I know at Gen Con, me and my friends, we stole away for a little while. We rolled up some D&D &D characters and had our own little private adventure away from everyone else. And we also found a room that was empty and we went in there and we just played Game of Thrones, the board game for four or five hours. So there were times where I was in the craziness. There was times I was away from it. That said, if you are just looking to go and game while well, you can do that at Gen Con, Yes, there are going to be a lot of other things pulling at your attention as well. Well, that's a pretty good sampling of the tips that we received. If you want to see the rest of them, go back to that Table Talk episode. You'll find them in the comments. But right now, I want to leave you with a video response from Ben. And until the next episode, thanks for watching. I've got to be a part of the Spiel Convention in Essen two years in a row now. Never really having been a part of the gaming community before, I was blown away by the scale of the convention and also how friendly and welcoming everyone was. Normally, I'm the reader of the rules and teacher, and one of the best things I like about a convention is that you can just go up to a table, sit down, and someone will demonstrate a game for you and teach you how to play. I actually find it quite relaxing and refreshing. You also pick up tips of how to teach games better when you get back to your own gaming group. I expected conventions to be kind of loud and kind of a crazy environment, but much to my surprise, it was a calm, friendly, laid-back community of people that had the same passion and are excited about the next new board game or where the industry is heading. If possible, I know that Essen is something I like to go to every year, and in the future when my kids are a little bit older, I like to go together as a family. Hope to see you at one of the conventions soon. Bye!